is Rachel Goklosky cooking with Mrs. G and today we're going to make a morel mushroom slurry. Hunting for morel mushrooms in the wild can be really challenging uh, especially if you live here in New England like I do. They're not as numerous as they are in other parts of the country. So sometimes you can find morels in unlikely places just as often as they are in the likely places as you'll see in one of the videos that I have here on my channel called Morel Mystery. I found a bunch of mushrooms in someone's yard not near any of the likely host trees. There were no elms, there were no ash, there was no poplar. Um, in fact there was no trees at all so check that video out it's a lot of fun. Um, so what I decided to do this year since I had um, come across some damaged and trampled on morels is to make a spore slurry and what you do is you create um, a delicious environment for the morel spores to start developing mycelium and then you make a basically like a morel milkshake and then spread it all over your yard um, in areas that you've prepared and made um, a little hospitable for morels to grow. So let's head into the kitchen and talk about how to do that. So of course the most important ingredient you're going to need for your morel slurry is some morels. And I had gotten these, it's an interesting story how I had gotten these. I was scrolling on my social media and there was a woman on the town page that had a morel on a stick and she was rolling it. She was afraid to touch it. She said, these are all come up in my yard and are they poisonous? What are these? And so I contacted her and I went over there and I, you know, being the foraging and mushrooming instructor that I am, I instructed her on more morel mushrooms and we went around her yard and she had actually stepped on some. Her and her husband had stepped on some and mowed some and weed whacked some, but there were plenty good ones left and so we shared them and now they're as in love with morels as I am and they gave me all of these ones that were trampled and mowed and weed whacked and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to use them as sort of like a seed morel and we're going to create a slurry so we're going to show you what you need here so you're going to need filtered water and when I say filtered water uh, that means uh, you know out of your kitchen filter or you you're going to need to go buy some filtered filtered water and you have to have filtered water because if there's any chlorine in it like uh, your tap water will have it's going to kill the spores. A half a cup of flour, a half a cup of caro syrup and you can use molasses make sure it's unsulfured molasses if you do and then in your blender, you're going to fill it up. You know, it depends on how many morels you have. So I just have it filled up this much. Now there's going to be billions and billions of spores in your bag. So I saved a little filtered water here because I don't want to miss out on any of these spores. I'm just going to kind of shake it around in my bag a little bit and add them. That way I don't miss any of the spores that came off in my bag. And now I'm going to add the flour and the caro syrup. And we're going to give this a blend. So we're going to pause here and do a blend. So now we have our morel mushroom slurry, which does look like a milkshake. And the next thing you're going to need is a five gallon food grade bucket and a air pump. This one is for like an up to a 10 gallon fish tank and some tubing and an air stone. And when we get all of this together, I'll tell you why we needed it. Okay, so here I've got my five gallon bucket and my air stone going with the air pump. I've got the morel mushroom slurry. I've got some wood chips that I had gathered from the area where the morels were growing. 
and these wood chips um, obviously are going to be more well liked by the, this particular fruiting of morels but you can choose whatever wood chips you like if you can get a hold of some elm or poplar or ash wood chips um, you can use those and then I also have some wood ash uh, a couple tablespoons of fresh wood ash. You don't want to use wood ash that's been rained on, so um, make sure that it's fresh. It hasn't been rained on, and what this is going to do is it's going to help keep the bad bacteria down and the good bacteria flowing. Um, this air stone will create, keep it from becoming an anaerobic environment, so this will also help keep the spores alive and um, keep them able to feed. So we're going to mix all of this together. So here it is all mixed up. Um, make sure that you're using filtered water. You can fill your entire five gallon bucket up with filtered water and this mixture. And we're going to let this sit for 24 to 48 hours with the air stone going. So it's been 48 hours that the morel slurry has been brewing in here with the air stone. So hopefully we've grown a little bit of morel mycelium. Okay, so I equally dispersed the spore from this bucket into three more vessels because it's billions and billions of spores. And the more water, the better if you can dilute it. Um, that way it can help soak into the ground. It's going to soak into my wood chips really well. I soaked my wood chips as well. I have well water, so I don't have to worry about chlorine. So I could use my hose. But if you don't have well water, you're going to want to use filtered water for this. So um, if you're diluting, remember to use filtered water. Okay, so I've prepared an area in my yard. It stays pretty dark and moist throughout the year. And I have used a similar black mulch to the same mulch that um, the host morels were found in. And this mulch is one to three years old. It's, you know, there's some old mulch in there. There's some newer mulch in there. And um, I also laid some agricultural lime down in this area before we put the mulch down and uh, because lime seemed to have been another aspect to what has made the morel fruitings happen this year just everywhere where i've found morels this year were areas that were treated with agricultural lime and so i'm going to be spreading that slurry another thing that is great about this area is there are a lot of hickory trees both in the forest back there and there's two hickory trees here near the area that we'll be treating. You can see. And hickory trees are just one of the many trees that morels like. So maybe after the mycelium thrives in this mulch, it will create a relationship with the hickory trees. So that's how to make a morel mushroom slurry. I hope you enjoyed it and you get a chance to try it. If you can't find any of your own morels, you can also order morel spores online. And I hope this one works. It will probably take uh, one to two, even three years to see some morels fruiting. In the meantime, um, enjoy some of my other videos and don't forget to hit subscribe. This is Rachel Gokloski, Cooking with Mrs. G. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Etsy, and of course here on YouTube. Love to see some comments and thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe. Happy foraging.